G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam and in today's video I'm going to show you how to use SSJS and WS Proxy to return a list of all users in your Salesforce Marketing Cloud account. So for today I'll be making this code in a cloud page and so I've gone ahead and made myself a brand new cloud page. I've used the content block by ID to reference a content block. I can produce some code very quickly and then save it and refresh the cloud page to see my code spit out straight away. I have done this previously, so I'll link a video in the description below so you can do this for yourself. So for the solution today, we're gonna to be using some WS Proxy and server-side JavaScript. So to start with, I've got my basic SSJS code here, loading my core, and I've got my try function to make sure I catch those errors. Now we'll be using a retrieve function in WS Proxy, so you can jump onto my basic retrieves in the documentation for Salesforce, and scroll down and pick up one of my example scripts here. This one looks pretty good. I can copy that and jump into my code resource and paste it straight in. Now we will, for today, we'll be using the account user object, not data extensions. So in my SOAP objects, I can find my account user object. And the account user has all the information that we need to know about the user within one of our Salesforce Marketing Cloud instances. So for example, we have the active flag. We're gonna have the records email address, their ID. Are they an API user? Uh, what their name is and so on. So we'll be using this object and retrieving these columns in our call. So to start with, let's copy the account user and add that into our code straight away. As that's what we'll be using to retrieve against. We'll have to return some call, uh, some columns. So we've got name. We don't want these other fields though. Let's go back into our object and find some other fields to retrieve. So let's bring back a few more fields from the account user object. Let's bring back the active flag. That'll be useful. We've got name, we've got active flag. Bring back a few more fields. Let's also bring back the create date. That'll be good to have. We also get the customer key. And what else will be useful is API user, that could be useful. We've also got the last login date. And I think, unless that's it, let's also get roles actually, that's a good one. Let's bring back the roles for each user as well. All right, that's gonna make our call for us, but now we have to make our filter. So for the filter, let's go where the active flag is equal to true. Perfect, so now our call is going to go back and it's going to return back all these columns from the account user object where the filter is found as true. So let's now print out the results. So I can say write, I'm going to write back the stringify of the description and results. All right, let's give that a go. I'll go save. We can go back to our cloud page and refresh. Oh, and that took a few seconds to run and I can see why it's brought back a lot of users. Now, curiously, I do not have that many users in my instance. I've only got two active users and yet it's brought back all these people, all these accounts. Now these are all hidden accounts or hidden users within your business unit. We don't want all these users, that's far, far too much. We just want the actual people who have actual accounts in the instance. So let's jump back into our criteria and we'll change a little bit to try and bring something else back. Why don't we instead say where the email address is like, and I actually want an at symbol. Actually, even better than that, let's make a more complex filter. Go back onto my retrieves uh, section here, we actually can use a complex filter, this one here. So let me copy this new filter, go back to our code and make ourselves a new filter. So for our new filter, we're going to say where to start with, the email address must be like at, uh, and we also want the active flag to be equal to true. Those two things must be true, because it's an AND statement, in order for the record to come through. Perfect, let's now try that out. I'll go save, go back to my cloud page, and refresh. Perfect, that's much smaller. 
And straight away, I've got a lot less accounts. Let's have a quick look by going to my name. I can see I've got one, which is my first record. And I'm hoping I've got a second record somewhere in here. I think I do. I think it's actually my name. I've got one and there is a second record, but it's just off screen. Perfect. So my two users did get bought through. So what I can do now is have a look at my data and try and sort this out to make it a bit cleaner. So back onto my code, let's rather than spitting out the string, let's try to work through it. So we'll start off by jumping into our server-side JavaScript loops. Let's grab ourselves a nice simple for loop, that one there. Back on our page, let's rather than writing out our function, let's make our way through it. So for i equals zero and for the length of our results, we'll keep stepping through our users. If I have a look back on my code, I'm pretty sure that we can actually have a look at the name. And so we'll get the name of our users. So I'll write out like this. I'm going to write out the name. It's going to be the results i dot name. And we'll spit out the name of my two users so far. So I'll go save. Let's try that out. Perfect. There's my two users, my name and my name number B. So we've got the name. Let's get the rest of our data as well. But you know what's even better? Let's do this in a table. So what I can do, I can grab my write function. Let's go make ourselves a table. So we'll say write, make a table with border equals one. And then what do I want? I'm going to make some TRTD. So I'll go TR, TR. Let's go TH. And we'll make our name. Now additionally, I'll make some other fields here too. So I'll do name, I'll do create date, last login and perhaps roles, that'll be good. So I've got name, I've got create date, I've got last login, and then my roles. All right, so I'll cycle through this by making another write statement down here. Now I won't need my table anymore. What I will need though, is I'll need to make my TDs. So some for name, some for create, and all the way along, just like that. So to print this out, I've got my name here. So I can say name and the same thing here, except I'll do the create date just like that. Whoops. And I'll keep going. So I've got create date and then I'll have the last modified date or login date and then the roles. Perfect. Once that's all done, I then want to write out the end of my code. So I'll take this one, and then I'll finish off my for loop and write the end of the table. Just like that. All right, let's give that a go. I've got my pluses, I've got my quotes, and all my variables all looking good. Let's try that out. All right, so straight away, I've got my create date and last login dates. That's working pretty good, but the roles is not working. Okay, let's see what's happened there. So you can go back in and perhaps my roles is actually an array, it's an object. So I can try this out by going stringify. And I can do my stringify of my roles, just like that. I go save, let's try. Aha, that's why. It's actually another payload of additional roles. You can see here the name and the role name. So let's go and cycle through these roles and try and output each of the names of the roles I've got. So I'll jump back onto my code and we need to break the role section. So it's going to be this section here. All right, so what I'll do, I'm just going to copy this function and put it down here. I'll use that in a second. I'm going to end my write statement here before I start to stringify my code. So I'll cut that there, which means now I can put in my roles. If the roles, I have to cycle through all of those role details. So I'll make myself another for loop. This one I'll call r for roles. 
my forward will end there. And so now for each of the rolls, that's going to be not just the results length, that's going to be the results i dot rolls length. All right, so for each of those, I'm going to do something. I want to write out the name of the roll. So to do that, I'll do write. And it's going to be the rolls R, as I cycle through the rolls, and I'm going to take the name. Now I might also go plus and add a line break in here. Oops. A line break, just so we can get each roll on each new line. And once that's done, I'll then pick up the rest of my write function to close off that table, or that cell. Just like that. And once the cell's closed, the next loop closes, and then the table closes at the end. Perfect. That should be my loops done. So let's save that and refresh it. Oh, looking good. So there's my two users with my creation dates and best of all, the roles that each one of them is assigned. Now from here, I could do some more SSJS and WS proxy to upload this information to a DAR extension, which I could then use to extract onto the FTP and download onto one of my other servers. Or I could use this SSJS within my email to send a daily or weekly report to the admin of all current active accounts. But I'll leave that for another day. For now, as you can see, it's a great little piece of code which you can run to get all of your current active users that contain an at symbol in their email address. I'll put this code on GitHub and I'll put a link in the description below so you can try it out for yourself. If you enjoyed this and you've had some fun learning today, then please let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you're notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud content.